Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today I'm going to guide you in a very uh, beginner-friendly watercolor practice. I love watercolors and so do my students. I know that watercolor comes with a challenge that we need to figure out the right amount of water to use. So sometimes if you use too much, the color will tend to blend too much. If you use too little, it's not going to be a pleasant uh, experience to paint. So watercolors come with a challenge, but also with beautiful surprise. Sometimes, you know, since we cannot 100% control the media, we also need to learn how to let it go and how to embrace the little, you know, I wouldn't call it accident, but maybe that blending on the paper that happens in an unexpected way, you need to turn them into something and embrace it in your uh, artwork, right? So today we're gonna do, we're gonna do like a, a small little village, very basic, uh, simple design. To start with, uh, we're gonna use a pencil for drawing. If you have watercolor paper, I highly encourage you to use that, but if you have a good mixed media paper, it will do. Remember that the process is more important than the project, the product, and I want you to feel uh, free to adapt my videos and my practices to your own need and what you have available in the house. We need, of course, a cup with the water, maybe a couple of brushes, a medium, a small side, or whatever brush you have available, a watercolor palette, of course, you don't have to have like mine, a big variety of, you know, like a big palette with a variety of colors. So you can have also a basic one with primary, secondary colors, because remember that mostly my first video at the beginning of this channel, I explained the color theory, the color wheel, and how can we use the primary and secondary to mix together and create our tertiary colors, and how we can use the gray to create some nice uh, um, tones and the black to dark up our shade. So if you have to review the color theory, if you practice it already with me, go back into your journal. You should find the project that I'm talking about. It was a beautiful flower that we turned into the color wheel. Otherwise, I go back into my channel and check because I have different practices about colors. After that, you just need to set yourself in a comfortable position, add this watercolor paper, cup with the water, a brush or a couple of brush, watercolor palette, and a pencil for drawing, and an eraser if you need. We are going to sketch, which is different than drawing, so we're not going to do any shading with a pencil, we're not going to do any complicated or sophisticated details, we're going to just trace the outlines to set basically uh, the landscape, uh, the little cityscape that we are going to paint uh, together and everything else will happen with the painting. One more thing because I like this technique very much and I know that some of my students mostly when you are like a beginner makes uh, the practice a little easier for you or the result is going to be somehow a little more controlled so you might like it more. I also use an extra fine uh, um, markers. You can use a sharpie if you have. I micron markers, very, very professional, or any brand that you have available with an extra fine black point. So we're gonna go over the lines that we trace with the pencil before we do the watercolor. So it's gonna help the beginner and intermediate to just figure out a little, like a better what and how they can paint, uh, um, what they created and how they can paint it with the watercolor. So it's gonna help you to control the technique a little more. So I'm gonna switch to the camera and let's get ready. Okay, friends, here we are. Materials is ready. I'm gonna use my little watercolor journal. If you have a journal, use it. Otherwise, just use separate pieces of paper, but then remember to, uh, you know, keep them all together nice and neat. It's beautiful to go back and see the improvement and the changes in our technique. Pencil for drawing, watercolor, cup with a brush, and my extra fine markers, and a piece of paper towel just in case that we have too much water on our brush and we want to just keep it a little uh, drier. So as I told you, we're going to do a very, very simple a sketch we're gonna do a couple of houses a tiny little village we're gonna use basic lines and shapes so we can create something that is really friendly beginner we're gonna start uh, tracing the line of our grounds whether we can call the line of the horizon we don't want something too perfect right we want something that's you know create some movement and i know that you will see my lines are extremely gentle and delicate and so should you yours so never push hard but just like uh, use dynamic lines so that you can change and fix at any time so let's start to have like a couple of houses you know I always think about the countryside uh, typical like American small town 
which I like so very much. So we're using basic lines, basic shapes. So this is a really, really, really uh, uh, beginner friendly practice, but it's a practice for honestly everyone. If you are more on an intermediate, if you're an older artist, uh, go and keep adding details, uh, do something. Maybe you can have your house as an inspiration. Why not? Um, you don't have to copy exactly what I do. Let's start to give this house a nice little porch to cover the door. Another, you see, triangle, square, rectangles. We can include the door inside. For my young artist, I also like, you know, my youngest student, I suggest you can actually uh, be inspired by your own house, for example. We're going to give this house some windows. So we are using the shape of rectangles. So remember, we don't want something that is perfect, but just something that will do the job, right? And that will allow us to have a nice composition with some details that we can have fun in painting and learn how to control the watercolor a little better, right? It's a nice practice. Let's move this aside. If you want to add the shutter to your windows, you can do so. Do a little chimney over here. And then, of course, uh, I'm going to start adding some more details. So the roof, so you can really do whatever you want. I'm going to do some lines. Also, we can create some uh, um, implied texture in the house so when we paint it's gonna be a little more fun we're gonna do some plants and you see i'm just really scribbling right so scribble a little line as i say to my students usually in school we say do not scribble in some cases i say scribble scribble we're gonna have a maybe the side has a beautiful nice porch And a little fence, you know, I'm just saying. Then we are going to do some tree. Remember that we did other practice. As you see, I'm using very scribbly lines. You set your branches. Nothing perfect, really, just a sketch. And then with scribbles, we can create like the outlines of the trees. The top of the tree, we can scribble inside, so we create this optical illusion of leaves, right? We're not gonna paint one leaf at a time, one leaf at a time, also because our tree is pretty, you know, far, it's pretty small. So we're gonna have another plant over here. This plant, we're gonna make maybe a little path, right, for a house. Maybe we can do some shapes, kind of pebbles right not everywhere but just to give us the idea of pebbles and then scribble a few more lines for the grass you see really very very simple very very basic so maybe we're gonna have another tree over here we're gonna do this different it could be like a little smaller and younger tree we're going to vary the shape, so we create some variety in our drawing, and not everything looks exactly the same. And here we're going to have a second little house. We're going to make it maybe, I don't know, different. Uh, we're going to make it a one-story house, a ranch, so we can create a different type of roof and a different type of geometric shapes. So there is a, such a good practice uh, 
um, for the kids, for example, to review the geometric shapes. For someone who is into watercolor, to kind of uh, um, get some more practice that is not so intimidating. Because as I say, after we finish the the design, we are going to um, outline it with a marker. So it's going to give you a better idea of what you just did. And definitely it's going to help you in controlling. Let's make a nice, nice porch. We're going to have the front door here nice and big okay, this time it's gonna open like this here we're gonna have two beautiful windows bigger than the other house so you know we experience like the shapes in a different way we can use the same shape and repeat it and as you see, I'm using very dynamic lines, which means that they are not perfect or exact lines. They are sketchy, you know. We can create some texture, maybe it's wood, and then maybe we can have two planters here and we can have some scribble again scribble 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 for your plants there you go maybe here we're gonna have the gutter again to create a little more interest and here a little bit of grass in this case if you want you can create some like a very sketchy lines to create some texture on the ground right this might be grass in mine you can change you can add details if you want and then in the background maybe we can set the line for a few uh, heels and this one is going to be all sky so now we're going to switch uh, and we're going to go over our design. Even when we do this outline, they have to be not perfect. They don't have to be perfect. You just outline the lines that you created, which is an extremely good practice because basically you go over the lines and the shapes. So you practice twice. These markers like a Sharpie uh, or other brand permanent markers they do not blend with the water so make sure that you do not use a regular crayola markers because in that case the marker will blend with the water which is something very pretty and we can do it in another time for another project but it's not something that we want when we need to paint something so small and more precise so we really need the colors to stay when we put them right so if the marker will blend we will lose all the outlines that we are creating. So this type of, for this practice, make sure that it doesn't matter the brand, but you use a permanent marker, black. You can use a gel pen as well. It won't blend. Do not use a regular pen because it will blend. I will add all this info in the description box. So you're going to um, be able to Don't worry if your scribble with the marker are not exactly the same that with the pencil because we are going to erase the pencil before we start to paint.
I love to use these very nice and sketchy lines. They allow me a lot of freedom, right? You feel that you don't have to be super precise. It's a very nice feeling. I really like and enjoy to do this scribble. So just let's make sure that we don't forget to go off top of any of the outlines. And then, as I say, we will be uh, ready to paint. We're going to go on to the second house. onto every single line so that we trace before we can add other you see i'm gonna add some of these very very light diagonal lines so that give us the illusion of the reflection on the windows and so they make it a little prettier and more interesting right you can do it in every windows if you want look how pretty let's go back here and do some of these lines so they give us that optical illusion of glass Oopsie. Enter one, enter two, scribble, scribble. Reflections. Here and I'll do something in here. That's true for pebbles. Don't worry if you're not going on top of the lines that you trace, as you see, I'm changing a few things and make it creating a little more like movement on the grass. And then maybe here that we have like a, the heels, I want to have some nice, you know, some texture, some optical illusion that there is like their heels and here. Another round with some more far away plants. And we leave the sky as it is. Now we double check that everything is outlined and then we are going to erase with an eraser before we start to paint. Okay, now that we finish to outline everything with our extra fine black markers, we are going to erase carefully all the pencil marks so we have the surface ready for us and Look how pretty it looks. And as I say, these black outlines is gonna they're gonna help you to kind of manage where you want the colors and kind of control the water uh, in the watercolors a little better. And if something happens, as I always say, if a color blend the more that you want it to, it is totally okay, right? This is as we say the beauty of this media that can sometimes it can be a little tricky to control. So let's have fun and let's make sure that if you have a palette like mine that has different tones of green and colors so you have fun and you use as many colors as possible out of this palette 
Or, but if you have like a more restricted uh, palette with some like primary and secondary, remember that we can dark up our colors or dull them, uh, adding some gray or mixing them with a little bit of yellow if we want, for example, the green to be lighter, or we can mix it with a little bit of blue if you want to go on more on a turquoise and darker type of green. So remember that depending on the palette or watercolor that you have available, you might have to mix the color, the colors uh, differently that I do. Also the fact that you know you can do something inspired by a specific season. So if you have if you want to inspire yourself by the winter or by the fall, definitely the color that you chose you will choose are going to be uh, darker and more on the dull side than bright and intense. Um, you can barely, as you can see, I'm putting like a water um, in the on the watercolor, and then I barely touch the paper with my brush. So you need to, you have to stay like uh, inside of the shape that you created. But as you can see, if the color and when the color blend let them blend. We don't want something that is too perfect. We want something that shows some movement, uh, point of interest, uh, personality. If you think that your brush is becoming too wet, remember that you have your towel paper, you tap it so you can kind of recontrol and reset the amount of water. And we're just going to have fun and to play with this color and filling out the area that we created with our sketch. As you see, the green blended a little bit in the road, which is perfectly fine. No harms done. If you want to control it a little more, you just dip the brush inside the color without dipping again in the water. And maybe you can even add a little bit of texture on top of the texture that we just we also created with the pencil and the black marker. Maybe you can uh, relax uh, while you paint with me, listening to your favorite music. Uh, It's good to play with some darker spot, uh, make it everything more, a little more interesting, uh, interesting, and then play with water on top of them. Nice. Uh, there we go. Now let's go on to the road that I want to be not too dark. Uh, so maybe I'm going to mix uh, some white. Uh, with an olive green and see what happened. Then I just dip the brush in the water and I spread the color. Then I will go on a little darker brown and dark up the road a little bit here and there. Now for the house also you will be able to really really pick the color palette that you want. You can get inspired by the colors that I'm using and I will use. You can actually create your own things. lighter and darker brown, more on the reddish side. It is always nice and important to, to use the dark and light tones, dark and light color and alternation. And we create this value pattern. This is what, you know, how we call it. And it's definitely, it definitely helps to give really that movement, that interest on our pieces, right? That if we would not be able to have if we play like if we use the same uh, tone of the same color over and over but if we play instead with multiple 
tone of the same color, the same hue, we have a like a, just a, such a better um, result at the end because we can really, really, really uh, have all of these points of interest in our pictures, in our painting, uh, even when we draw. It happens to all the time. Value is one of the most important element of art. And we really need to make sure that we incorporate it as much as possible. It's also one of the things that is the thing that is difficult, like as you know, to learn. I think about my student learning how to shade and blend right with a pencil, so giving value, right? The alternation of light and the shadow. And it's definitely one of the most difficult things. But once we get there, you will be able to include the element of value and play with it in any pieces that you create. And you will notice the amazing right difference that you will do on your artwork, right? Pretty, pretty. This one, I think that is going to be a nice, nice lighter green. So I mix a little bit of like a green with yellow. I want to have definitely the tip, since it's the first thing that the, the sunlight will touch, definitely lighter. And then maybe I can dark it up a little bit. There you go. So we create once again value. So the alternation of darker and lighter, dark and shadow, and it will make our... Uh, compositions much better. A little bit of darkness here, I want it a little dark. Maybe more like this one. There you go. On the back, I'm gonna use the same green that I use it here, and then maybe I will just um, Blend it with some more water, and so we can create this green background. We don't want it to be too precise or too neat. We're gonna mix it probably also other earth tone, definitely. And now. Let's have some fun with the house. I will go traditional with one, a nice, beautiful red um, roof. And I just barely touch the paper and spread gently the color that I created on the roof. If we go outside the line a little bit, actually, it's all good, all better. This type of artwork they don't have to really look too neat and too precise, you know. We want them to be fluid somehow and not perfect. If you need to control the color a little more, you want to see it a little more intense, you would just dip the brush directly into the color palette without diluting with some water. I just noticed that I have to... Go back over here and bring some green. Also here. Almost like yellow. And then when I paint these type of things, I like uh, always think about it. Oh, what if that would be my house? What I would do? Would I like it? Uh, I'm for one story. I love one story house. Oopsie. It blended a little bit more than I wanted. It's okay. We're going to go over it. We're going to blend it. We're going to put it down. Perfect. Okay. Now, let's have some nice gray brownish. You use the tip of your marker, of your brush, you dip it in the water, dip it in the paper so you can control it. 
It's really nice and pretty. I'm going to go over like this to this one too. Go over a little bit on the red. Now I try to create a lighter brown for the wood on the other house, the porch. This house almost a black, dark gray uh, roof. I would like to have maybe a light blue house. And I feel that in this type of practice, there is so much that you can learn. And as I say, it's a very beginner friendly because we sketch first with a pencil, reviewing the way that very simple and basic lines can give us a simple and basic shapes. And we can use those shapes to actually create like a sort of a little landscape, maybe a small village or a cityscape or whatever you would like to paint. And then it's such a good exercise because we have to go over those lines with the pen, the extra fine markers and we also learn how to kind of control the watercolors a little more barely touching uh, with the tip of the brush uh, the paper to make sure that we can control the color a little more and grab a little bit of dark gray I want to do the gap in the color, almost black. There you go. And maybe um, let's do a gray door. Be patient, you spread the color, and if something like that happens, you just do it. Like this, you blend it together, and it's perfect. That's it. Now this color, we're gonna make it instead a kind of red. Since we have a dark uh, roof, we can have a fun with a very bright color for the house. Once again, you don't have to copy my color. You can do you. Just like pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure that you color the house exactly as you would like that house to be. Forgetting about all the rules about what is the color that a house should be. Remember that we're focusing on our process. So how can we learn to control the watercolor a little better and create nice composition? Nice. Now we're going to do a very, very dark blue door. Whoopsie. And as I say, that will happen sometimes. I'm going to color this side of the door, spread this everywhere. And then I will tap my brush. 
dry it up. You see, I just dry the brush very well, and I'm going over just spreading the watercolor. So I'm changing a little bit the color of the house now because I had to kind of fix the blending that came out from the blue. And I'm now um, kind of going over this bright dark orange, but it's really pretty because as we see, things should never look too perfect. We don't want that perfection, right? Where everything is so perfect because it would not be interesting. So now we're going to create a very, very light um, color for the windows and very gentle you will go. Dipping inside the little squares there, make our windows. If you want to have fun and change, we go to a light, light yellow. To create that idea, like the illusion of the light coming from the inside, right? And sometimes we know when the light reflects on the glasses, uh, it will give us different type of reflections. There we go. Now I would love to do some nice uh, plant here. A little bit of green we add with just a little bit of water on the brush because it's very tiny and we want to be able to control. Then maybe I would like to add a little touch of pink. And once again, I'm not using too much water now because I want to do tiny, tiny, tiny little dots that will represent the sunflower. I'm going to do some tiny little dots over here, maybe a few dots here. Just to change a little bit that palette and don't have just the green, we can do some dipping in the water so we have a little more. We can spread this nice color on the heel in the background, create an illusion maybe of flowers in the distance, and also creating a more interesting color palette, right? Instead to have a, something that is all green, so monochromatic, we kind of diversify the color palette. And we create a little bit of point of interest here and there. I would like to use this type of orangey pink to alternate to the hot pink. And you can do whatever you want. So keep adding until you think that it looks exactly or more or less as you pictured in your mind. And then you make your decision on the sky. The sky could be a sunset sky, could be a blue sky. Um, you could leave some white spaces to represent the clouds. Remember that with watercolor, we cannot really paint with a lighter color on top of a darker color. So if you want to leave uh, some space uh, light, you need to block it from the color. So you do not have to paint in that space. So you will leave that white. If you want to like an intense blue sky, like the one that we finally have today, I look outside my windows and that is the sky that I'm seeing finally after a pretty, pretty wintry, stormy week. We are back to blue skies and it feels amazing. So, and then sometimes if you want to light up the blue, you will just dip the brush in the water without dipping it again in the color. You see? And you play going on top of the color that you spread and then you have to do it some more. If you don't want it to be too dark, you're going to water it and tap it on the, ta the towel paper. So we are going to the paper towel. Why do I always say on the contrary? You always get the word upside down, mixed up. We go around the trees. A little bit of blue inside the tree as well. And we left the, some of our spot white. We're gonna blend these colors all the way down and keep filling the spaces. 
eyes around the other tree. Create a little bit more color. Make sure that it's well blended. And we're gonna keep filling the spaces. A little bit more water. So you can, you see, you can rebrush on top of the colors that you already put on the paper and then bringing down and bringing them up. A little bit of blue, you can go behind the tree, mostly in this one. Very pretty, right? You see, it's just an optical illusion, and little by little, you will be able to create this optical illusion. And as you notice, some accident uh, like uh, happened on my paper, as well as probably they happen on yours. But look now that they all look together nice, and everything makes sense. Even the imperfection, remember when the, uh, the red. Uh, blend it too much into the green. I really like it. So if you want, you can grab the red, the little, like a little bit of red again. And now that it's drier, you can go and create a little like darker and more intentional strokes. But as I say, we don't really get uh, too concerned because it's really, really pretty. So here is my little village, a little countryside. I really would love to see yours. Remember that the process is more important than the product. And remember that you can do this type of practice and technique with a sketch with a pencil, an outline with the extra fine black markers, and then a, a little less water than usual to control your watercolor more with any subject that you decided to uh, create. So I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye and I hope that you enjoy this watercolor practice. Okay guys, I hope that you enjoy this uh, watercolor practice as much as I did. I will, I look forward to have many more. Uh, my students and people that I know ask me all the time if I can just help them to become more familiar and comfortable with the media of watercolor. In school, we use the watercolors very much because the scholastic ones are pretty affordable. So it's a very common media to use in the school and they are pretty easy to wash and store compared to other uh, paintings in the media. So this is like, like uh, my little village. I wish that I could see yours. And remember that you can use this technique for many subjects, anything that you would like to portray and paint. This technique that we use today is called wet on dry. We work on dry paper with a wet brush. We try to control as much as possible the amount of water because we want to fulfill specific space into our design. This is why we do the sketch with a pencil. We go over with an extra fine black markers. Remember, make sure that it's not washable marker, but is a, a permanent marker. And then we start the painting. And as you noticed during my practice, I got a couple of accidents in which the color blended a little more than I wanted. Just let it set, let it dry. You can rinse your brush, tap it on the, the paper so you dry it. And then you can gently go over to kind of blend and spread the color a little more. But anyway, we embrace that uh, accident because it's what uh, makes our piece unique and different and not super perfect, which would be really boring. So I want you to have fun and feel relaxed when you do the practice. I will include everything in the description box, my materials and also alternative materials in case you don't have the ones that I did, that I do. And remember, if you have a limited color palette, primary and secondary, go back to my video and review the color wheel so you are sure that you're able to mix and have fun creating beautiful tertiary color for your pieces. I see you all next week and I wish the best of the day and the weekend ever wherever you uh, are and please consider subscribing to my channel so we have this community to grow and spread the, the word about my channel if you like my content. Ciao a tutti!